Uh, good morning, good afternoon. And we're going to do the Torah reading for Nitzavim Vayelech. It's two parshas. And uh, this was actually the Torah reading for the Shabbat of the uh, 11th and 12th of September here in Israel, and maybe in Hutzlaritz as well. I don't know if they have a different reading schedule. But anyways, let's go. So this is from the first Aliyah, verse 9. You are all standing this day before the Lord your God, the leaders of your tribes, your elders, your officers, every man of Israel, and women, by the way. Everybody was there. Okay, when was this? First of all, it's today, like right now, we're all here. The Torah is being given all the time. And also at that specific moment when Moses was still talking, when we are still about to cross the Jordan and he's giving the whole book of Devarim is his last, you know, will and testament, as we might say. And he's giving over, remember we had the blessings and the curses and then he's continuing on with what the halachas are when we're going to get into Eretz Yisrael. And he's saying, right now we're standing all together. Everybody's hearing this. Everybody's together. The leaders, the elders, the officers, every person is hearing what he's saying. He continues, verse, verse 10. Your young children, your women, see I told you the women were there. Your convert who is within your camp, both you both your woodcutters and your water drawers, drawers. So why does he need to tell us that? Why does he need to specify woodcutters and people who draw water? Because these are like super basic jobs or basic people maybe you might even say, like blue collar workers, labor workers, like very tough jobs. And even they are learning Torah. Even they are there. Everybody is there. The work has stopped. This is how super important it is. We're all in this together. Why? Why is this so important? Verse 11, that you may enter the covenant of the Lord your God and his oath, which the Lord your God is making you do this day, right now, right this minute that you're reading the verse. In order to establish you this day as his people, right now, whenever you read this verse, that it's, it's, it's including you as you're reading the verse, it's including me as at the moment I'm reading the verse. And even when I'm not reading this verse, it's happening, the Torah is happening all the time. And that he will be your God as he spoke to you, as he swore to your forefathers, Avram, Yitzhak, and Yaakov. So this whole koach of having the Torah constantly being renewed and told to us and taught to us is because of Avram, Yitzhak, and Yaakov. But not only with you am I making this covenant and this oath, but with those standing here with us today before the Lord, our God, and also those who are not with us this day. So anybody, it doesn't matter, it's for then, at that time, and also for the future, which is right now. For you know how we dwelled in the land of Egypt and how we passed among the nations through which you passed. So everything is also connected to Yitzhak Mitzrayim, and all our travails in the desert is what made us a nation. And you saw their abominations, meaning what happened in Egypt, and also the other nations that were uh, in um, Jordan. And the repugnant idols of wood and stone, silver and gold, which, which were with them. Perhaps there is among you a man, a woman, a family, a tribe who heart strays this day from the Lord your God to go and worship the deities of those nations. Perhaps there is among you a root that produces hemlock and wormwood. So somebody who's like really has like a bad time or a bad spirit and they want to poison other people. They, they, like, they, don't want to be, they don't want to be in this covenant. They don't want to have the mitzvot. They don't want to have all these brachos. And so they're going to like, they're going to poison other people. So what do we do about that? Perhaps, he's saying maybe, the God's saying it's, it's, or Moses is really saying perhaps this person is there. And it will be that when he or she, such a person hears the words of the oath, he will bless himself in his heart. He's going to give himself a bracha. He's going to bless himself and say, I will have peace even if I follow my heart's desires. Like he's going to give himself a shoot to like not listen. Wow, what a psychological book, right? in order to add the punishments of unintentional sins of this man to that of his intentional sins. So this guy's going to like, he's going to, maybe he could even succeed. So here we're answering the questions. Why, why do, uh, why does sometimes the wicked prosper? So this is an answer to the question because the guy got a bless. He blessed himself. He like said, you know what? I'm going to be able, I'm going to succeed in this, on this mission. And God like opens up the gates for him because we have to have, has, we have to have free will. 
verse 19 though the lord will not be willing to forgive him rather than the lord's fury and zeal will fume against that man and the entire curse written in his book will rest upon him and the lord will obliterate his name from beneath the heavens so even though the guy gave himself a blessing himself the bracha and it seems like he could succeed god's not going to forgive him but wait a minute what about chuva so i mean i don't know if this punishment's like that minute it's like so here's this whole like getting zapped by lightning thing so we have this dichotomy between 18 and 19 verse 18 and 19 about free will versus like god's like actual punishment because if god actually punishes the minute you sin then you, you wouldn't have free choice and here 18 says that we seem to have choice but verse 19 says no god's going to come and like give him like the, all the curses so we have to like really this is like a extreme paradox of you know of religion here and the Lord will separate him for, for evil and out of all the tribes of Israel, according to all the curses of the covenant written in this Torah scroll. So, uh, you know, it's not like he doesn't know. Like, he knows what's going to come to him. It's not like he wasn't warned or informed because it's right here in the book and he heard it all. He just was there when it was being told. In a later generation, your descendants who will rise after you, along with a foreigner who comes from a distant land, will say, upon seeing the plagues of the land and of the diseases, which the Lord struck it, sulfur and salt have burned up this entire land. It cannot be sown, nor can it grow anything, not even will any grass to sprout upon it. It is like the overturning of Sodom, Gomorrah, Adam, and Zeboim, with the Lord overturning his fury and his rage. That was with the, that was with the story of Avram and Lot. That was way back in Breshit. And all the nations will say, why did the Lord do this to this land? Why is the reason for this great rage of fury? Then they will say, see, the nations are going to tell us. It is because they abandoned the covenant of the Lord. See, the nations know what, what happened. They didn't understand like, what, why, this, why the situation is what it is. And they're going to tell us. God of their forefathers, they, they abandoned the covenant of the Lord, the God of their forefathers, the covenant which he made with them when he took them out of the land of Egypt. So they know about it too. For they went and served other deities, prostrating themselves to deities for which they had not known, to which they had not appointed them, appointed, apportioned to them. And the Lord's fury raised against that land, bringing it upon it the entire curse written in the book. So they also know about all the curses of Goyim. It seems like they know all this information too. And the Lord uprooted them from their land with fury, with anger, and great wrath. Yeah, we've had tons of exiles from Eretz Israel. And he cast them to another land, which really did happen to us. We actually got exiled many times as it is this day. So it could happen really at any moment. And the hidden things belong to the Lord our God, but the revealed things apply to us and our children forever. That, must, that we must fulfill all the words of this Torah. So nothing is hidden from Hashem. And that ends the first Aliyah.